Welcome back, everybody. It is Central Valley Talk Live for this Wednesday. We made it to the middle of the week, and we are getting ready to say bye-bye to July. Hard to believe. I'm Austin Breed coming to you from our Tower District Studios inside the Mike Briggs Building. Connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Austin Reed on Air. You know, we are going to be live and local throughout the day today. We've got just a few guests in store for you, so make sure you stay with us. Uh, coming up, um, this weekend, I was looking at the forecast, and we are going to see a roller coaster in temperatures. We're going to cool down today a little bit, like three degrees compared to yesterday. But then uh, as the weekend comes, highs will be back close to 105. So we'll take the, the little break right now. Uh, let's bring in my first guest today. Joining us live in our Tower District Studios today is Susan Bachara. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming back here, inviting me. Absolutely. Our pleasure. Now, you are, of course, with Comprehensive Behavioral Services. Correct. You've been doing this a couple years. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's my 35th year. 35 years. 35 years, yes. Tell me, tell me a little bit for our viewers that are watching today or, or on our replay, and they they haven't seen you before and they haven't heard your story. In a nutshell, um, what is it? Okay, um, I came originally from Hong Kong in 1985, mm -hmm. and. Uh, just to make it shorter, you know, if not, I'll be here all day. Okay. <laughs> so by 1987, uh, I had a calling uh, that I really believe that it's a calling from God to reach out to the youth that are most at risk. Um, I had a troubled childhood myself, not that my parents were bad, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, growing up, I went through some really difficult time, you know, through sexual abuse okay. and a lot of things. Sorry. And so my heart went to these kids and so I started volunteering at Juvenile Hall uh, and then they assigned me as an assistant chaplain for 20 years. Yes, I, I fall in love with these kids. I see only goodness in them. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know that the behavior is not perfect, you know, none of us are, yeah. but it's just that I felt that there's hope for them. You know, God puts it in my heart that we need to take time, we need to work with these kids. So I started a ministry called House of Hope for Youth as a nonprofit, and this is when I met Mike and a lot of the people. You know, yeah. Jerry Dyer also, the, our yeah. new mayor. At the time, he was only a patrol officer. He was just an officer. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yes, I've been I've been around long enough. Uh -huh, yeah. So anyway, to make the long story short, so with the House of Hope, we ran it for 20 years as a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not a political person, but I am a very outspoken, straightforward person. Um, I'm not always politically correct. <laughs> I used to do a show here called get to the point right, so yeah, I don't know yeah. yet right now I'm still contemplating whether I want to bring that show back or not uh, but it's raw you know I like to tell the truth and mm -hmm. nothing but the truth so help me God and I really focus on the first amendment right even for the young mm -hmm. people I really believe that I came from a, a country that didn't have that right so this is one area that I'm very compassionate about I don't care where these kids are coming from or whatever I don't I want them to have the right to really speak up because a lot of time they come from families that are not you know well, and, and right well, now we are seeing such a scary situation with young kids that are bullied. Uh, I mean, obviously we had the Uvalde, Texas shooting mm -hmm. uh, a couple months ago. And do, do you feel that, you know, kids that are struggling uh, mm -hmm. in that development of, mm -hmm. you know, 16, 17, yeah, 18, yeah, 19, yeah. Um, is there hope for, for people like... Um, them why not actually you know people are focusing only on the violence they have mm -hmm. so much fear i've been doing this 35 years i'm not saying like i'm superwoman or anything it's because i see the heart of these children most of the time i notice that one thing we have right now especially in the 21st century we have a broken family structure a lot of families are broken it doesn't matter what your socioeconomic background is there's, all, there's a lot of them only have one parent in the home. So that's what we focused in. My organization now has expanded to Parlier also. So I'll talk about that later. Okay. But what I need to tell you is why I'm not fearful of what you just said about violence and about the shooting. And all, because that's all I have. Those are the population I'm receiving. 89% um, of my clientele are from probation and parole, you know, and all the 
kids that are doing shooting and everything else. So to say that they're no good or there's no hope and everybody feeling helpless, instead of complaining, why don't you do something about it? That's what I did. And this is America. You know, we don't depend on people. We survive as a country being volunteerism. America is known for volunteerism. And I don't know what happened to that. Yeah. I really don't know what happened yeah, to that, you know? It, I know. And I'm still... Yeah, there's the, yeah the, the, that community is... Right. you got to have ownership because one of the reasons I would say the school education system mm -hmm. has not really um, focused enough on that love of country, love of family, yeah. you know, volunteerism. All those things are important. If not, the kids have nothing but, but an entitlement thing. What, what do I get from that? You know, we, we told... In my program, our focus in three things accountability, hold them accountable for their action, mm -hmm. be responsible, or there will be consequences, one thing or another. People fight over the gun laws and all that. To me, I will be honest with you, the guns don't kill people. It's the mindset, you know, and we talk about mental health, right? We talk and talk and talk, but we, we do very little. I'm, a, I'm also a certified mental health first aid instructor. Oh, okay. So cool. I'm not a therapist, but I do assist people, companies, agencies, families, how to understand the symptom of mental health. That means how do you identify depression, bipolar, different types of depression, so people can be educated enough mm -hmm. and approach the people differently when they see a homeless person or when they see somebody having a crisis. Every time we have a big shooting in the, in the United States, you know, like the one in Illinois, mm -hmm. I mean in Chicago, oh, and yeah, then in Texas, yeah. everybody panic, everybody get upset. Right? For me, we keep forgetting I'm not saying I don't have empathy on the victim. Of course, the victim is dead. I mean, innocent people died, and I don't condone to that, right? But they sometimes forget the shooter. And a lot of times, this is how I see things, is I pray for the shooter. I usually study what happened to the shooter. What was his childhood, right? right. And every time, I'm right on target. Nobody paid attention. And this is the kind of program we run, right, for the youth. This is why it's so effective, is I teach them these things. When you see a bully at school, when you see somebody a little bit different than you, what do you do? I teach them about compassion. I teach them about empathy. And that's how you stop the violence. You don't, you don't just stop taking guns or whatever. It's not. It's because angry. They're angry. Uh, hurting people hurt people. Let's just put it that right. way. Right. They're hurt, so they, they want to hurt. Yes. And sometimes they feel like, okay, nobody's listening. Somehow they got to have somebody to listen to. That's why we do a lot of talking in our, my, my program. We provide gang redirection. We provide uh, substance abuse classes, anger management, family. Re it all sounds good. You know, program is good, but it's the way we approach it. We, we teach them about unconditional love, mm -hmm. tough love. We teach them about responsibility, holding them accountable, making them feel good about themselves. You know what I mean? Knowing who they are. A lot of them, they, they get lost into all this mix, you know, in our country today with social media and everything. It's not just in America, but we're supposed to be the model. I don't know what happened these days right. yeah it, it is you know crazy. we're supposed to be a country that that models that compassion that models and assists other countries but we don't teach our kids these things anymore yeah so to me honestly this is my personal opinion and I'm gonna continue and stick with it because mm -hmm. it's what I how I run sure. it. Uh, the school needs to focus on education period mm -hmm. don't stop putting moral education into it that's the the job of the parents mm -hmm. But because also the parents had failed, so now the, the school in somehow had to take the role. Mm. So if we can go back to family values, right, yeah. then school can actually educate. And I'll give you that example in Parlier. We extend to Parlier. I've been in Parlier 10 years now, since okay. 2012. Recently, we've been expanding, and now we have a youth center for them over there. Wow. Yeah, they, they just opened on June 24th. Now, how did we end up there? It's not like we have millions of dollars. It's not. We don't need that kind of big money. Let me tell you what it is, the leadership. We have a mayor in Parlier mm -hmm. um, that is so proactively supporting community. Really? And her team is so strong, and it teamwork. And then the faith-based group, right? And then the school district in Parlier. It's a we whole... All, yes, and yeah. we could say that the whole village come together mm -hmm. focusing exactly what we need to do. But a lot of time in big cities, we don't do that. Everybody wants power. Everybody has a lot to say. Everybody wants to be chief, but no Indian. Whereas in a smaller town, I find it a lot easier when you have a good leadership, like, like the mayor, right? Yeah. She brings in a good team, the, uh, the city manager. Mm -hmm. She brings in the good police chief. Mm -hmm. Nobody is prideful. Let's put it that. They're not there, what about me, or 
like I did it. No, we're a team. Mm -hmm. We can never say we one person did it. Right. Team, 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 team. Effort, yeah. and that's leadership to me. And that's what's that, that that's what it's going to take to. to mm -hmm. That's what to I make lives. these young people learn. Mm -hmm. Like right now, we have the youth center. I make sure they take care of it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hire somebody to clean it or whatever. Yeah. This is for them. They right. take ownership, and this is what we need to teach our young people. Right, right. They have that ownership. You know, everybody has to be entitled to have ownership, but yeah. not for selfish reason. Right. It's for to benefit the community. Exactly. Benefit right. the community and churches too. They need to get more involved. They can't just preach in the pulpit, right? You know, yeah, I've been I reaching agree. out to the churches and everything. It's uh, we we tell them what we do, but very few would come forward and assist uh, in, mm. in a lot of the things we're doing. Sometimes they do, you know, like uh, food uh, delivery mm. and little things here and there. But I'm talking about if you really want to evangelize. I'm a very strong Christian woman. Mm -hmm. If you want to evangelize, uh, you need to be outside of your comfort zone. And that's my challenge for them, yeah. is that, okay, it's great to hear the words. It's good to know you can pray in a safe mm -hmm. zone where it's comfortable. But you need to be out of your comfort zone. And helping others. Yeah, I have a ministry called uh, In His Name, you know. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we do street outreach. Mm -hmm. We bring the church to the people, to the homeless, <clears throat> to the kids. Right. So in our classes, in our program, at the end of, of our group, right, we invite the young people to pray if they want to. We don't force them. Okay. Yeah, and wow. and I've never heard anyone say no. Right. You right. know, and even if they don't want to pray, we tell them it's a First Amendment right. Can we pray for you? Right. <laughs> you see? Yeah, yeah, there you <laughs> go. The other way. <laughs> so we're very uh, uh, creative, and right. a lot of my staff are actually my former students. That's so amazing. that's why it makes wow. it really, right. really different. Wow. After 35 years. I've been blessed. Yeah, a lot of my former staff, uh, my former students are now working with me. That's amazing. Yeah, uh, we've got about a minute left. Is there anything else that you wanted to touch on today? Anything that I missed? What a great conversation this far. Well, though. I have my new website now. Cool. Oh yeah, uh, that's right. We were talking about yes. that before the segment. If they want to know exactly what we do, okay. we have a website www.cbsfresno.net. Net. And if you can, if they want to check my website, all the information is there. Perfect. Susan, good to see you again. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, let's keep helping the youth. I'm not they going are to the stop future, until the so. day I die. And they're going to take me home. That's my retirement, my there's, 401k. There's your retirement. There you go. Exactly. Well, thank you. Thank good to you see so you. Thank you so much. All right. I'm Austin Reed. Thanks for joining us here at Central Valley Talk.